The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. Basil Chapman here. This is the Tiger Technicians Hour on this Tuesday, the 30th of May. We're going to be looking at some of these monthly charts to see what happens to the candles that are unfolding right now. The Dow over the last uh, three weeks has been one of the weaker indices, uh, together with IWM, the Russell 2000. What has led the way has been the QQQ, the SMHs, Semiconductor, ETF, the QQQ is the NDX 100, and the XLK, which is the S&P select uh, tech sector. Now look at this chart. In the Dow, you've made lower lows. <laughs> Can't believe I didn't. Uh, I had to sneeze right then. And lower highs. At the, this particular point, the MACD is still weak. The nine is under the fourteen. The price is under the two hundred period moving average. The stochastic's kind of weak at twenty one. The on balance volume is very weak. And I thought that there was a chance that today we could get some kind of a a bounce in the Dow as we rotate through. That, that's been the the the. the Modus operandi for so long has been that when one particular sector or, or sectors have been leading the way, the laggards just kind of sit back and have to watch. And then when the others start to take a bit of a breather, the laggards start to rally. And that's how you keep this equilibrium so that the bull market remains intact. Well, if that's going to be the case in this particular instance where we've got, um, we don't know for sure just exactly what's going to happen uh, with the uh, with the deficit, etc. But at the same time, what we're really looking at is the market has a way to, of ignoring what it wants to ignore. You remember, let me just show you if I've got the chart right here. I think I do. This is the chart right here. Yep. Um, so I call it the dark news cloud cloud cover. There's always something out there that's interest rates. Uh, it used to be impeachment, and then it was uh, a budget deficit. Then it was a conflagration between the two parties. Just went on and on and on. There's always something. But the market tends to ignore it and then take it seriously. Ignore it and then take it seriously. So this blanket, this darkness cover, and for anyone who's traveled um, thousands of miles, you know that sometimes you can go for a thousand miles or more with cloud cover. I mean, nature is so immense that that cloud cover can just sit there over a thousand miles of the ocean or right across the country, whatever it is. Well, this is a cloud cover that's been right in place since 11-11-2022. Uh, that's when I noted that there was probably a dark news cloud cover. So that puts a really strong resistance area in the Dow between 33,700 and 34,300. We can go higher, but that's kind of the area where if we can break through those, those resistance levels, something else that's very positive is happening. At the same time, we keep making lower lows and lower highs. So that's affecting the Dow. And for me, the Dow is really the Dow 30 because it's really a fantastic amalgam between, uh, I mean, you've got Apple, you've got a Boeing, which is a cyclical, which is a, is a, a, an industrial. Uh, Home Depot, I suppose in a way you could call that as a, a, an industrial because it really is it deep into the economy. And uh, maybe Honeywell to a certain extent, but Disney? Uh, Coca-Cola, <laughs> so Amgen, uh, you know, you're talking about a real mix. So this is a fabulous mix. I, I love the Dow because at this point it's taking a big digestive phase because it was leading the market up to the 1st of May. And now look what's happened. You've got the S&P. Right now the Dow's down 70. The, did I type it in the wrong place? Let's see if I can do this. There we go. S&P. It's trading right now down. Uh, no, I am typing it into the wrong. Oh, I've typed it into that chart. Okay, very fine. There we go. SPX. I always have the trouble with SP. There it is. SP broke to a new recovery high. 
it's a, a, a year, almost a yearly high, and uh, trading at up nine at 42.16. And this is what I'm really looking at. Look, you've got that missing leg D in the Chapman Wave. You're always looking. Oh, and I, I should mention this now before I forget. Uh, tomorrow at 7 o'clock online, I'll be doing a webinar. Uh, it's kind of it's an invitation. At big, B-I-G is the Boston Investors Group. Um, and they have these meetings. And I, I've been speaking to this group or the, the group that's associated with it. It used to be Investors Business Daily. Then before that, it was something else. But I've been giving a talk here once or twice a year for years and years and years, uh, decades, actually. Um, so this is going to be fun. And it's a perfect time because it's a real challenge right now to say, uh, you, you know what's working. But it's to look out a few months and say, what is possibly going to be the next, not a big, not necessarily the same standard, not necessarily the same elevation, but what is going to be uh, the next area of, of interest in the general market. And now I can't remember what I was trying to, oh, that's what I was trying to do. Um, let me just see if I can find this right here. There it is. So this is um, upcoming event, Wednesday, May the 31st, 2023, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, BIG, that's the Boston Investors uh, Group meeting, preparing for the next few months, Basil Chapman, guest speaker, and it'll be on Zoom, and I had the link. Uh, I've got the link uh, somewhere. Uh, but you actually, all you have to do is go Google Boston Investors Group um, meeting, and it'll be right there. Very easy to get to. So I'm, I'll be the guest speaker. It's usually about um, two hours or so, and I'll be taking questions. I hope we've got be able to uh, get everything running smoothly. You know, the, when it comes to these uh, internet actions, uh, sometimes just everything goes very nicely. And sometimes there's a little bit of a blooper, and you, you just you have to deal with it. Okay, so the S and P has finally made that leg D. In the Chapman Wave methodology. What are we looking for? We're always looking for a buy signal to be upgraded to a buy mode which would imply that not only will you go to peak A, B, and then C, but you go to at least a D. At least a D. You could go higher, but that's the objective. At D, other things kicking in the Chapman Wave methodology. Look, yeah, we went to a G on the 1st of May at 4186.92. Pulled back quite sharply, made a lower low, and then started this move. Peak A, B, gray A, gray B, and then C said, hey, the technicals are improving enough. We should get a D, and we got that D. Uh, we got it uh, not in the in the S and P on Friday. We got it in the spy. Okay. With that said, I don't like to see very quick peak D to peak E and then a, and then a sharp move down. D to E says you must always circle it because it could be a chap wave instant restart if you've gotten there within three within three bars. This is within two bars today. We're making leg E. Let me expand this a little bit so you know what I'm talking about. There it is. There's your leg E, and the MACD is good. The, the stochastic's fabulous at 92%. On balance volume is not overboard. It's very good. And the 9 is way over the 14, and the price is way over the 9. So all I can say is that at this particular point, forgetting all that dark news cloud cover that's out there, the price is saying, woohoo, I, I like what I'm seeing. That's what it's saying. QQQ. Look at that. Look at that move up. Spectacular move. I'll be back in a moment. Basil Chapman, Dow's down 63. SP's up nine. We'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. 
The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. So folks, this on the left is the daily, on, in the middle is the weekly, and on the right is the monthly. This is the QQQ chart, the Invesco QQ Trust Series, the NDX 100 trading vehicle, Look, from the doji candle low, that really, it looked as if we were about to have a little bit of a failure here on the 24th of May. You get a big gap up with a doji candle. Ha, huh, doji candle at a, at a new recovery high. On balance volume getting a little overbought. Should have a pullback. No, screams again. Look at the technicals just keep you uh, on the buy side here. Look at that, the green nine period moving average. And spikes up, and today we've gapped up again. By any stretch of the imagination, right here, we should be seeing some kind of, uh, some kind of, mm, how can I put it, an overbought situation on the, on the shorter time frame, that's the daily, <clears throat> becoming overbought in the weekly, but still with, with uh, the technicals <clears throat> very, very strong. And the monthly chart, is zero point sixteen. This is the first time that the MACD has crossed positive since it went negative about almost a year ago. So uh, when you put the whole thing together, you say overbought, yes. So now let me draw the two patterns that I always look at when you've got like a, a, a huge rocket ship to the upside. I always say, okay, either it gives it back and you've got the Eiffel Tower pattern, which means that the high in the next day or two that high will be a high of absolute consequence because there'll be a, a the rocket ship space move up is going to reverse to a rocket sh a space move down, and that means that within in a price time match by let me just look at my calendar here. So on the 31st, that's Wednesday, that's tomorrow, that's the last day. Thursday comes in the first of the new month, um, and I would have to put it by Monday, a Monday the fifth. So that is a week from today. Yeah, a week from, what is today, Tuesday? Yeah, just a, less than a week from today. No, no, no. Why am I getting confused? Yes, yes. So that would say that by uh, early next week, or may, let's, see, let's give it all the benefit of the doubt. Let's say by the middle of this week, this coming week, that is the week of the the beginning of the first full week of June, 
We're testing the, the, the candle high and low of 332.91 in the um, candle of the 24th of May, which has a low of 329.56. But wait a minute. That's one way. The other way is to say you could have a high-level consolidation. And the reason why I say that is when a sector – which has been doing okay, suddenly catches a light and it really becomes the, 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 uh, the, the sector du jour. But in this case, it's not just the sector, it is sectors. There is buying comes in on every dip until it just, until Investors Business Daily Top 50 doesn't have that, the crowd in that sector anymore. It just, instead of having out of 50, they have 19 to 25 leaders in the top 50, uh, it shrinks. But that means you'd have to have that big, sharp decline. So there's another way to look at it. So I give it a little bit of an upside, extra upside. I don't think 357, uh, 371, the high of the uh, back in April of last year, is, is our target just at this particular moment. It's only 20 points away, but I, just, I think we might miss that. But what I would say is I'll do it on the daily chart. I'm going to put in a rectangle going to just Friday's low. Friday's low is the 339 area, right? We're at 351. So we could have a consolidation where we rotate so that on the um, upside, you've got spectacular stocks like an NVIDIA, made another high today to uh, 419. And just three days ago, four days ago, it was trading at, three, at the 309 level. Yeah, I mean, this is spectacular stuff, right? So, um, and I put in the rectangle there to say those are the levels that I'm looking at in the technique that I use for gaps. I don't want to talk about that now because there's a lot that I, I, people have asked me about. So let me just do this. We've got enough AMD. We've got so many spectacular stocks. Uh, look at this big red candle having made a new recovery high all the way to 130.79 today. So these guys are getting a little bit tired. But as they get tired, my suspicion is they actually have a consolidation but hold better. And they consolidate by having the weakest ones pull back. The, is Marvell in there? It all says one one of the strong ones. It's usually a, oh, look at that huge gap. The Marvell trading a couple of days ago at 44. Today it hit 67. I mean, 20, 38. I mean, by a, a, a th more than a third to the upside. So there, I'm looking at some kind of a consolidation, right? Just I'm calling it a consolidation because the, the fervor and the buying, it was so intense that you've got to get a pullback. But at least for a little while, I think you'll just keep these bursts where people say, wow, I missed it. I've got to get it. And it'll sustain the price. I don't think we've got an inverted V-shaped pattern where we just go screaming to the downside now. I think we do that a little later. In the meantime, I want to look at stuff like the XLF, like the financials. Is it even possible with yields having gone this high for the financials to say, you know, this is this could benefit us. I know economically what's going on is not benefiting the banks at this particular point, but is there a chance that we see the XLF trading at 32.13 and maybe uh, some of the regional banks, some of the uh, money center banks, just find a little bit of strength to, in the meantime, if we start to see the pullback in the high-tech sector, especially the semi-high-tech sector, uh, that we... We see a rotation. Now, we haven't always seen that. I'm just saying this is the way I want you to look at the market for the next couple of uh, actually first days, then weeks, and then months. So that by the time the summer's finished, we've had consolidations in some of the overbought sectors and we're ready for another move to the upside. And this, this time we could rotate to other sectors. That'll be really important, number one. Number two is the semiconductors. Look at this. It's, that's a spectacular move. 130, 120s just uh, the other day. Today's high is 151.71. I had 142 as an outside chance um, three weeks, uh, two weeks ago when I did that in, in a short time, time frame. 159 is the next level, but the all time high is 100, 100 and that was 159s? Yeah, the double top. It made a high in November of 2021. At 
Next month uh, of uh, December, it went to 158.96, and the following month, it went to 159.35. So what, by uh, the, the way, 159.41, the way these uh, levels come back to within pennies sometimes of huge price moves, I mean, just the sounds, 159, I think I said 42, I'm going to type that in, 42, and I think I said November 11, I'll check it out later on, 2000 and 21, 21, yeah, 21. All right, so with that said, we've got a break coming up, and I wanted to just go through these things, the XLK, the same thing, XLK is trading up, um, 1.56 at 148.90, 142s was the target that I thought was an outside chance. Wow, today's high was 151.75. This is, we, we are really set up to have some kind of a digestive phase. When I get back, we'll look at gold and silver and copper and... Um, Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn. And he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tigers Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. NN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, folks. We're back. And we're back to see uh, <coughs> that the TDX is down 14 ticks at 30.25. So my thinking here has been for a little while <clears throat> that the daily chart made this incredible double top at 36.10 back on the 13th of April pulls back to the 33 level and then screams up the three points to 36.26 for a new leg F on the 4th of May. I love these uh, patterns where you get the cup formation and it's like the dreaded H upside down and fails. 
And then what happens is the MACD deflects lower. The stochastic was not even close to where it was before. And all of a sudden, you're looking at the price tumbling from the 36 level to $30. That's 20%. That's a, that's a big move, almost 20%. Now what we're looking at is the monthly, the weekly chart has got this M-shaped pattern that the G slash, uh, did I miss the G? It should be a G slash C alternate count. There it is. Alternate count could very well make a peak G because the stochastic slipped to 58%, the on-balance volume is weak, and the monthly chart has struggled to get back to that inside track repellent zone, uh, but the tech bills are not bad at all. But I'm saying that you, the dictate is that the short term leads the next level. Uh, it's like a speedboat. You know how quickly a speedboat can turn around? A super tanker takes forever. Well, the monthly chart is a super tanker. The middle one is the little ferry. And you've got the little speedboat here. The GDX daily is just struggling. The, the tide is too strong. The, the tide is coming back, going to low tide. And it's on its way. It's at 30. I think 29 is going to be the whole 29 area. That's going to be tough. If it holds that, that's a good sign. Because at that point, the dollar might be starting to find some resistance i wrote it in the wrong place it should be a c here we go okay there we go uh this is the dollar dxy the dollar is holding okay it's down 10 ticks at 104.12 the left side high is or oh, did i not type that in uh, the left side high is the 104.70 area uh today's high is 104.53 uh let me see the exact high of the little just there. I, I didn't want to go that high at this particular point, which is 105.10, the high of the 15th of March. I like to do things step by step. So this candle high right here is there you are, 107.74. 104.74, that's what I say. So that's that's kind of the next level of resistance is trying to get there. The weekly chart is just in a rectangle formation. I don't see the strength yet to say the dollar is streaming to the 107, 108 area. I just see the dollar as being in play at this particular point, 100.79 to today's high of 104.53, that's a pretty good percentage just on the way down. That was a sharp move down. On the way up, it's a sharp move up, but not big enough. It needs to, if, if the dollar starts to close in June above 106.50 for two out of three weeks, so that means not only in June, it goes into July, then I'm going to say to you, aha, gold is in for a deeper correction. And the dollar is is leading, and that's going to impact uh, a lot of things, including the market. So, okay, I want you to do that. Just show EUR USD. Uh, look at that. Uh, it it tested the target we had was the 1.06 area for the 200-period um, moving average in the cup formation. In the arch formation with the chapel wave inside wedge target resistance line hit uh, that weekly chart, just like the uh, – <clears throat> Left side, right side price time match that we saw in the GDX daily. You've got this now in the weekly chart of the euro, and the technicals are starting to fail. It, it won't take much more. If it goes down to 1.060, it's at 1.068 right now. Um, I, I suspect that you'll finally see the nine period moving average in the weekly close negative. And that just says maybe you've got a little more strength to the dollar than you, you're looking at right now. But those are levels that you have to look at because right now, this 200-period moving average with a stochastic flat at 6%, 6.4, on balance volume just slightly, um, uh, it's flat. I, of course, it's flat because this doesn't have volume. But the uh, MACD, uh, the histogram's improving just a little bit. So all I can say is that this is going to be a really important point to, to, to monitor. Uh, USDJPY is the yen. Looking at the yen, it's gone to a leg C today. There's no other way I can count this. Well, I could give an alternate count. No, I can't. This is, this is a leg C. And uh, because of it, I'm suggesting that it's probably going to try for a D, but it's in the higher range right now. And that confirms that the dollar does show strength as the gold shows weakness. Uh, looking at um, the GLD, that's gold, trades at one-tenth the price of spot gold. Yep, that's pulled back very sharply with the same double top. And now we, we've got a little bit of a bounce up one today at 181.99. That's just a bounce. I, I didn't complete this um, arch formation. I'm not going to do it now because I've already done this on gold itself. So there on the gold, that's the one I, I use. 
That's the template with the arch formation. Peak D and the Chapman wave peak D, you've got to be careful. It can go higher, but that's where other things can happen and other things have happened. So now it's showing a little bit of strength up 14 in the gold. Um, and I, I would anticipate that after such a big move to the downside, but I still think that the 1935 200-period uh, exponential moving average area is, is going to be a target for gold in the shorter term. Now let's go to silver. So the question was, is GDX a trade? I don't think so. Maybe on a very short intraday, but I would just I step aside for now. I just don't think it's I don't think it's there yet. Uh, and the GD the uh, silver had that left side right side time price match and it failed um, within pennies. Look at this continuous contract had a high on the 14th of April of 26.44, and then the test on the first uh, the 5th of May. Was it 26.43? Unbelievable how that happens. Um, so, yes, and that's uh, in the weekly chart as well. So I just see gold and silver just taking a breather here. It's important that every once in a while they step aside and let the market do its thing. High-grade copper, same thing, pulling back quite sharply. I always put that together with wood. The iShares Global and Timber Forestry also kind of stepping aside, just digesting gains. Now, I, I wanted to just say that Within the gold and silver area, there might be stocks that you can trade on a shorter term basis, but I'd be a little careful. I like to use ASA as a kind of a benchmark for me. There's the ASA Gold and Precious Metals Limited, I, I, just only on a sentimental basis, originally from South Africa. And this is, I think, four or five um, gold stocks that make up this particular, it's like an index almost. And uh, yeah, it's pulling back. And this might be a halfway mark. It's at 1530. I'd say 1450. Uh, 1450 will be a big test if it hits that. So that's that. All right. So I hope I helped you there. Then crude oil, I'm just adding crude oil only to say the lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m is a pattern I've spoken about forever. Look, there it is. There's the sharp move down. Then you get the H pattern that that goes to another arch, makes an M, and it's breaking down. A close underneath the, uh, this is a continuous contract of crude oil, a close under 69.47, no, a close under 69.30, we'll say, uh-oh, now we're going to tackle this big candle with a low of 68.54. I don't know if it's going to go into that low of the wick of the uh, the, the day of May big spike to the upside. Okay, that's that. Cool. Now, bonds. Yeah. Uh, look, there's your lowercase h goes to a lowercase f. It goes under the low that was made of 98.88 to the week of the 3rd of March. Ugh, that'll be very ugly. So we're watching this place. Yeah, I'll be right back. Dow Sound 101. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African RAND, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Are you looking for a way to consistently add winning trades to your portfolio? Tom O'Brien is here to help. Tom O'Brien has been successfully trading markets for over 30 years. A frequent contributor to TD Ameritrade Network and CNBC, Tom O'Brien founded TFNN over 20 years ago to help educate investors just like you. Tom's daily market newsletter, Market Insights, is published every morning when the markets open to give you the competitive informational edge you need to succeed. These newsletters are packed full of Tom's advanced technical analysis and are geared to deliver comprehensive strategies for a successful portfolio. Get Tom O'Brien's newsletter, Market Insights, today 
and try all of our products and newsletters 30 days risk-free with our money-back guarantee at TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Biotech is booming, but for how long? Whether you think the biotech bull has room to run or has run its course, trade LABU or LABD. Direction's daily S&P Biotech three times bull and bear ETFs. Visit directioninvestments.com slash biotech today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor for Side Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Hi, folks. So, uh, in this pattern that we're looking at, remember the low that arch can become lowercase h that goes to a lowercase m. That's what you got there. This is actually a pattern that I look at based on the MACD. It deflected low in the E mini on the 10 minute chart at peak F and the pullback really sharply from the 42, uh, 43 ish high. Comes all the way down to the 42, 14 area. Now it's trying to rally. Question in the Tiger YouTube was. Can the E-mini make a new, uh, can it uh, retest today's high? I think that it's going to be tough to do. I, I can see that uh, 42.30 to 42.33, maybe 42.35 is a possibility if uh, each selling produces a good rebound and all of a sudden people are going to say, I, I, I can't short, I'm, I'm sorry, I just have to, I have to buy and they're going to start buying. But if we start to trade under 42.10 in the E-mini, that's kind of done. I don't think we can go to the to a new uh, uh, test, uh, to a test of the high today. Now, let me just do a couple of things here. So a question came in about Amazon. Uh, yeah, actually, it's more a statement, more like Amazon. Uh, they haven't made money in you know, five, six, seven years or whatever it is. Uh, they, they must be cheating somewhere. No, I think that what happens is, you know, bookkeeping for huge, huge companies like this. I mean, we're talking about their uh, um, their quarterly report uh, is better than probably 70% of countries around the world. I mean, that's the way you have to look at it. So what they can do with their books, and you think they haven't got the best accountants in the world, um, so I, I would not say cheating or stealing or thieving or anything like that. I would not do that at all. I would say I'm sure, absolutely 100% sure that some of it goes on, but that's not the business. The business, that's because, you know, you've got employees, you've got thousands of hundreds, tens of thousands of employees, things like it happen. Um, and I, I suspect that they've got a pretty good handle on a lot of things, but it's mostly that they plow the money back into building the company. And that's what Bezos has done forever, uh, just constantly pushing, pushing, pushing the limits of every single thing. I mean, I've there, there, there was a show recently showing the uh, warehouse here in um, Massachusetts in Fall River. And actually, Fall River is a place that's really come along. Uh, a long way, in fact, over the last uh, few years. They have some fabulous companies, uh, businesses there, not just restaurants and things like that. So anyway, so in Fall River, and there it's because it's close to the um, the highways. It's it, There were many reasons. But they are they have technology that is just incredible. Uh, you know, you order something, you can get it almost the same day, or not almost, in some, t some cases you get it the same day, within hours sometimes. So I, I don't look at it that way. I, I just, I cannot get into that. I can only look at the charts. And the charts say that Amazon, uh, our, our well, who, who was it uh, from Boston, um, got into uh, Amazon, started at 84. And look at this right now, it's trading at 121. That's, I mean, that's 50%. That's a beautiful gain. Now what we're looking at is um, the cup formation 
says that it's gone above the left side high of the week of the 28th of October of 121.32. Now it's testing the high of the week of the 7th of October of 123.16. Today's high is 123.32. I mean, that's how I like to look at these, one step at a time on the left side. So I consider that Amazon has, has it made the, the October low? Um, is that really 81.43? Is that really the low that's going to be tested because there's some really bad news coming up, dark news, cloud cover? No, I think that the whole area of one, 112 to 104 that, that should be very strong support in any sudden turn down in, in uh, uh, Amazon, uh, regardless of what the reason is. Uh, yeah, it's, it's an online shopping. It's a it's an online shopping mall, and it's just easy for people to use that. So I, I'm sorry, I can't look at it that way. I can look at it technically, technically and say the daily is fabulous, a little overboard based on the on-balance volume. So that makes 121 right now, makes 119 to 100 and. 16, very, that's where it was just uh, on Friday. Very strong initial support. If it takes it out, then you can go into the 110s. Mm. All right, so that, a couple of questions there. I had a question about the FXI. That's the uh, China large cap. I said, be careful. I don't like this arch formation, the lowercase h that goes to lowercase m in the weekly and fails. It can go quite a bit lower, and lo and behold, minus 2.57%, down 50, 69 cents at 26.14. Be real careful, because if it takes out all these support levels at 25.17, that's the low of the week of the 2nd of December, that's a big problem. Dow's down 120, S&P's up, uh, down, yeah, no, up five and a half, really mixed market. But I think that we're in the throes right now of uh, testing what's left of um, that whole artificial intelligence surge and NVIDIA in particular uh, leading leading the way to the upside. That's going to be, a, a, to me, that's just really important. But as I say, I want to see if the, this particular pullback that I'm anticipating and uh, as subscribers know that I was looking at going to the short side, but just as a quick trade, we wanted to get something long that we are long. Very, very tight stop. Um, just to see if there can be a residual strength and then to flip to the, to the downside. I think we might already be flipping to the downside. We'll see about that. But there are so many. Look, IYT, the transports, just stuck in a range. Not breaking down, not breaking up, just stuck in. It's amazing how key indices like the transportation index. Why? Because it's such a mix. It's got CSX. CS, I wonder if I got notation. Yes, I do. So it went to peak A, B, C, just the latest, a uh, peak D right there in April, pulls back. Let me show you this. I'll do this live. There's a down arrow because it made that peak D pull back sharply. But the nine period moving average held very well. So it was a severe pullback. But look at this. Brand new, still residual strength goes to peak A, peak B, peak C. What do you expect in the buy signal to buy mode? A peak D. And now the nine period moving average has turned down. So I'm looking at this in terms of rotating, rotating through different sectors. Jets, this is the uh, Jets is the um, uh, U.S. Global Jets ETF. It's a United States uh, airline, um, basically the airline index. Went to a peak D and pulled back in a sideways range. Uh, what have we got? We've got truckers. What's one of the truck? Isn't Y a trucker? Allegheny. Oh, it's gone. Was it taken over? All right, I lost my Y. What is a trucker? You've got Ryder. Let's just go to Ryder. Is that R? Ryder Systems. So, yeah, it's the same thing. Uh, supply chain, transportation, fleet management solutions. I made a peak in the monthly chart, pulling back now. Still, technicals are holding okay. Weekly technicals are failing um, at 7969. And you've got your big spike to the peak, A, peak, B. It's the 200 period moving average, and it's pulling back. Um, it's just stuck in a range. Let's see if F, FDX is doing the same thing. Federal Express having a high-level consolidation, not in the monthly chart, but in the in the weekly chart. Uh, so it's holding quite nice. But see what I'm saying in this particular market? You've got to be so selective. Uh, it's just one to do. Oh, question came in. 
Uh, before before you wrap up, could you look at um, the AI area? Yes, I will. I'll be back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call Newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call Newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call Newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Hi, welcome to this is the last segment. I'm, I'm going to say the uh, bug, which is the Global X Cybersecurity ETF. Uh, had a nice spike to the upside spot from the 20 area all the way to today's high of 2440. Uh, leg C, it should pull back. Maybe you make one higher high. Let's see Hack because the two go together. Hack is the uh, prime cybersecurity ETF security stocks. It's in leg D. It went above the target we had here. And that was the left side high of, uh, on the 18th of 48.50. And today's high is 49.40. And it's in leg D. So, yeah, I think that we're in for some kind of a digestive phase. And this is so choppy. I'm still calling this just an F right now in the, in the weekly chart because it's just stuck in this rectangle, keeps making slightly high highs and pulls back, slightly high highs and pulls back. Yeah, so th these areas are in the next couple of weeks on a pullback. This is an area that I think should do very nicely. In the meantime, back in the range for today, I, this is what I'm looking at. The Dow is now down, down 129. Uh, struggling and tried to, it didn't make a new recovery high today, and that was kind of important to me. So, at this particular stage, uh, the technicals are all weak. There is just enough res residual strength to say it could try for the 33,000 
150s. Here it is at 32,965. The next day or two. But these monthly charts, um, uh, I'm going to talk about them a lot tomorrow. And I will also do that when I'm doing my, um, this is going to be a webinar for Boston Investors Group at 7 o'clock. It will be, I believe it's free. And uh, you can just, just just go to the web and you'll be able to find it. Um, it's pretty pretty straightforward. And uh, it will be from 7 o'clock Eastern Time until 9. Now, for today, if the Dow, 800, at Dow 124. If the Dow is holding off to 215 this afternoon, if it's holding more than 100 minus 180, that says, uh-oh, it's going to be pulling back. And then you'll probably see the Qs, which are the leaders right now, uh, up uh, 319 and 351. If they start to trade under 349, it says now we've 